Hi, welcome back to McClatchy Maths. My name is Natalie McClatchy and today we're going to continue our series on how to write a problem solving and modeling task, a PSMT. And in this video, our seventh video in the series, we're going to be talking about solve and the accurate and appropriate use of technology. And this is aimed at students in Queensland and their teachers as well. In this video, we're gonna have a quick look at the instrument specific marking guide, the ISMG. We're gonna talk about the different types of technology that you might be asked to use in your assignment. We're going to talk about how to present formula and we're also going to look at some student examples. So let's kick off by looking at the ISMG. Now this is our section for solve on our instrument specific marking guide and we're actually interested in this section here, the accurate and appropriate use of technology. Now if it's done well you can automatically get that tick in that box if you're doing what your task sheets asked of you. So it's really important to read your task sheet. We don't want to be hitting the box down under Underneath the use of technology and we definitely don't want to hit superficial use of technology so it's really important to understand what's expected of us. So let's talk quickly about what accurate means. It means precise and exact to the point, consistent, exactly conforming to the truth and a standard. In other words, it's free from errors and free from mistakes. Now, we've also got down right down the bottom of our ISMG was superficial. And we often refer to people as superficial. We say that person's a superficial person if there's not a lot of depth to them. So we're looking at really basic use of technology in this particular case. And in the case of inappropriate, Appropriate, this is where you've used the wrong technology or no technology at all to develop your solution. So a lot of this will be dependent on your teacher's judgment. Now let's have a quick look at the different types of technology you could be asked to use in your maths assignment. Now your task sheet will firstly tell you what's expected of you and this could include things like Microsoft Excel or if you're using an Apple product Sheets. It could include Desmos, particularly if you're doing math methods or prep math methods or specialist mathematics. It would also include the use of your scientific or your graphics calculator depending on your syllabus. It could also include the use of an online calculator and there are many online calculators available to help you check the accuracy of your work and also to help you develop your solution. There's also equation editor in Word. Now this one is only important to the extent that if you do your work using equation editor, first of all, it looks quite nice, but also what's important about it is, is it enables your work to be scanned properly by your teachers or your school's plagiarism checking software. Now for students, you might be thinking, oh, I really don't want them checking that, but it's important because it contributes also to your word count. If you do your working on paper and then scan it in, it makes it very difficult, first of all, for the software to check that you've actually done your work um, and it's different work to the other students in your cohort, but it also makes it very difficult sometimes for your teacher to see your working. Whereas if it's in Equation Editor, very easy to present. So we'll talk a little bit more about that later. Your introduction should outline the types of technology you're going to be using in your assignment. So if you can see here in the general math syllabus from the QCAA, they actually have a subheading that forms part of their introduction and it talks about the fact that they're going to be using a spreadsheet program that could be Excel or it could be Sheets and it tells you quite in detail what the program is actually being used for. So this is an important part of the formulate part of your assignment. So you definitely need to include something in the beginning of your assignment, assignment whether it's in your procedure or whether it's in your introduction or whether it's just a subheading as part of formulate that explains what technology you will use before you go ahead and use it. Let's talk about how we're going to present our formulae. So firstly, it's really important that we take a snapshot of any formula that we use in Excel to support our working. I'm gonna show you how to do that in a moment. This needs to be presented in the body of your assignment. If you put it in your appendix, appendices are typically not marked. So anything that goes in your appendix is really there just to support what's in the body of your assignment. So it's really important that if there's not a lot of actual mathematics in your assignment in terms of algebraic development, there's only a little bit of formula work, it's really important that goes in the body because that will enable your teacher to determine if you've got full marks for solve or if you haven't. Now, if we take snapshots of our Excel formula and we stick them in the appendix, we're not going to get marked and therefore we're going to get quite a poor mark on solve even though we've done the work. So we want to make sure that our formulae are presented in the right part of the assignment because it supports the accuracy of our results and verifies the working that we've done. 
I'm going to take you out to Excel now and show you how you can present your formulae so that you can take a snapshot of that and put it in your assignment. I've created a small spreadsheet which includes the ages of a number of people. I've also done some calculations here, finding the total sum of all of the people's ages, the average, the median and the standard deviation. Now I want to be able to show that information that I've developed in Word. So I could either take a snapshot exactly as it is out to Word or what I could do is set up a table in Word which actually presents a little bit better. Now that's the first important step, but our second important step is to actually show the formulas that we've used to develop this information in the first place. The way I do that is to go to this button here, formulas, it's on my toolbar at the top about in the middle, and if I click on formulas and then go all the way across to show formulas and click that button, you can see it's now changed my spreadsheet and I can see the actual formulas that have been used. This really enables your teacher to verify the accuracy of your working and help you tick that top box. Now it's important that there, if there are sums that you could do that are important calculations that you need to to do that you don't just jump out do them on your calculator and then insert it into the excel spreadsheet that is not an appropriate use of a spreadsheet let the spreadsheet do the calculations for you so take a snapshot of this bring it into the body of your assignment and then if you're wanting to remove those formulas and look at the raw numbers again you simply click back on the show formulas button and you'll see everything you need to see again if I use Desmos to do some graphing, it's really important that I show in my assignment in the body how I developed my graph. And the way that I do that is to take a snapshot of the viewing window. So I'm going to take you over to Desmos right now and we'll have a look at how that's done. So here I am in Desmos. I've created a couple of graphs, one of a straight line and one of a parabola. Now the viewing window is actually this section over here. Sometimes when we do a bit more fancy stuff in Desmos, there's a lot more information that's shown here, things like domains and variables. It's really important I take a snapshot of this section in addition to the graph and import that into the body of my assignment as well. As mentioned earlier, it's ideal that if we do any working in Word, we should be setting that out using Equation Editor. And I've already explained the reasons for that. I'm going to take you quickly over to Word now and show you how to insert an equation using Equation Editor. Okay, here I am in Word and I'm going to show you how to set up some very basic equations in Word. I've already got one here. Equation Editor always centers equations when they're inserted into Word. So the best thing you can do when you've completed your work is just click to the left of that and then left justify your work. That presents a lot better. So let's click on insert and over on the far right hand side you'll see this little button here with a pie on it, equation. This is Equation Editor. Now the first thing I want to do is I'm going to show you how to enter um, an equation using a fraction. So I've got this fraction button here. If I click on that, I get a range of choices. I'm just going to pick the first one there, which is the most suitable, and I can insert a fraction very easily, three-fifths. Okay, back to Equation Editor again. Insert, Equation. I can also enter things with powers over here, so indices. So the very first one here is my indices. Also, sometimes we use subscripts, and that's particularly when we're doing things like st um, standard deviation or when we're doing the mean. So if I wanted to enter a superscript, which is a power, I could simply put in x squared just like that. And the last thing I'm going to show you, because there's a lot more to Equation Editor than just that, you'll need to go and have a play. Insert, again, Insert Equation, and I'm going to show you how to enter some square roots. This is here on the Radical button. And the very first one is probably the one most of us will use. There's also this option here if we've got um, roots of greater value. For example, the cubic root of x would be shown just like that. So it's fairly simple to use. You just need to play around with it and get used to it. Now you'll notice that when we develop our working, it should all be left justified on the left hand side of our page, but that creates this big white space on the right hand side and we end up with a lot of wasted paper. That's particularly important in our assignments because we have a page limit. So a good way to get around this is one of two ways. Firstly, you could insert a table. So here we go, insert and table, and you could have it set up as two columns. So you have your working for one section down the left-hand side and then maybe this other section down the right-hand side. And it's a good thing to 
note as well that whenever you change directions with your working and start to calculate something different or use something you've calculated to move in another direction, use some words to explain what you're doing. So using tables can be a great way of avoiding all of that wasted space in your assignment. Another way is to insert columns. And what you can do is if you click on here, um, actually is layout, and then click on columns, you can choose two or three columns for your work and it will actually split it without the table lines so that your work moves across the page in a nice way. I find tables are a little bit easier to control than columns. Columns can sometimes affect the layout of your assignment and get a bit untidy. Have a play with it, see what works best for you. Another important thing to remember when you're presenting graphs in your assignment and they're generated by technology is that we follow all of the same rules that we would follow for hand-drawn graphs. So we need to make sure that we have things like a title on our graph, that both of our axes have titles, that our scaling is appropriate. And if we have, for example, we start at the number 50 on our x-axis, we need that little break shown in the axis. We need to make sure we're using the right graph for the assignment. And if we're doing something, for example, like least squared regression, we're going to show our trend line and also the equation on the graph. And if there's a legend required, then we also make sure we insert all of those appropriate features as we would do if we were doing it by hand. I'm going to give you some student and QCAA examples now of some good examples and also some poor examples of ways that we can meet the target for accurate and appropriate use of technology. This comes straight from our general math syllabus on the QCAA's website. There are some features here that make this the accurate and appropriate use of technology. Firstly, we've got access titles. We've also got a title at the beginning. You'll notice that the appropriate scaling along the bottom, we don't have that big use of white space that makes it very difficult to determine if the scatter plot has a positive or a negative trend, etc. You'll notice that in this particular case, this is a bivariate data assignment, that they've included the equation uh, for the least squared regression line as well as R squared has been added to the actual graph too. You'll notice as well that they've actually used the right type of graph for the situation. They've drawn a scatter plot and they haven't done it, for example, as two line graphs or a column graph and a line graph, which sometimes I do see on scatter plot assignments. Here is another example from the Math Method syllabus, and this is where I talked to you earlier about showing your viewing window in Desmos. So in Desmos, you need to make sure you include this section on the left hand side. You also notice that there's appropriate scaling that's taken place here. They haven't zoomed out too far or zoomed up too close. Here is another example from the QCAA's general math syllabus, and this is one of their budgeting PSMTs. Now, this one only got use of technology, not accurate and appropriate use of technology. You'll see that on the left-hand side of your screen where the QCAA has said that this doesn't get the full marks for solve. And the reason why is here. They've used some formulas, but there were other formulas where the student has simply added it up on a calculator and then inserted it into the spreadsheet. They haven't actually, and you can see that in a few different places, they haven't really used Excel as effectively as they could have. Here's another example for one of my previous students. This is my first sample today. And you can see once again, we've got all this excessive white space. This can be eliminated in Excel by pressing the plus button on your graph and then making adjust adjustments to your X axis and your Y axis so that we don't start at zero. And you could put a little break in there as well, but that eliminates that white space and really gets us a good idea of what the correlation is for bivariate data and other graphs. Here's another student example. In this particular case, they have sorted the bivariate data on their assignment. That's not an appropriate use of technology. In fact, it's an inappropriate way to use the technology. Now, bivariate data, if you're in senior, you would know that each of these dots actually represents someone's unique data. And what they've done is they've split the data up. And instead of being one dot per person, we've actually got two dots shown per person here. So they've treated, for example, someone's height or the, and their versus their weight or something like that. They've treated the heights as a separate graph from the weights. And we know with bivariate data, they need to come together as individual dots. So never ever sort bivariate data. I've got another example here where a student hasn't got any titles on their axes or on their headings, so it's very hard to tell what the actual assignment's about. And you'll notice that they've got the wrong graph choice. And this one here got an inappropriate use of technology. This is supposed to be bivariate data once again, and they've actually drawn a line graph with a column graph instead of a scatter plot. So make sure you choose the right choice of graph 
for your assignment topic. Well, if you found this video helpful, why not like and subscribe to us here at McClutchy Maths? You could tell a friend or tell your teacher that this video really helped you to put your assignment together. You could also hit that notification bell so you'll know whenever we have new videos. And why not follow us on Facebook and Instagram? If this really helped you, you could even share the link with your friends on social media. What's coming up in our series? Well, we've got three more videos on evaluation in a PSMT. You're not going to want to miss those, so keep on watching. And we've also got a video on how to get top marks for communication. If you have any questions about anything you've seen in this video or would like to request some more information, you can contact me at mcclutchymass at yahoo.com and also direct message on Facebook and Instagram. Well, you've been watching McClutchy Mass. I'm Natalie McClutchy. Have a wonderful day.